What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Feed the Beast Infinity Evolved Expert Mode. Oh yeah guys, so today's the day we're going to start working on a little bit of applied energistics. We kind of set up some storage previously and then I was kind of fleshing out a design for our server room and then we haven't touched it in uh, quite a long time. So anyway, I was noticing that our drives over here, yeah, things are looking pretty bad. We got a lot of red lights on there, which means those discs are completely full. There's no more room for anything on them. Yeah, and we just don't have a lot of drive. So things that I want to work on today, I want to work on getting more storage hooked up. I want to get more than just these six drives connected to the network. Currently, we just have these six over here. Well, actually, you know what? I think I did hook up these six, right? But we don't have any disks in them. But like all these other server banks, they don't have any wires connected to them. They're just there for, I guess, you know, marking out where there should be. Um... One thing I did do is I moved all of these servers over one block. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> the reason why I did that is because they're off-centered by one block. Oh, no. So, yeah, I took a little bit of time here. It actually takes more time than you think it would to move everything over. But, yeah, I got that done. I moved everything over one block, and now we are completely centered in the room. So, things that I want to do, I want to move our controller to a better spot. I kind of just place it there when we originally made this room and kind of, you know, ran all the wires off of that. It, it doesn't go there. <laughs> it just doesn't look right, right there. I think what we're going to do, uh, this is like the center of the room. We're going to go ahead and put our controller probably close to this wall, maybe like over here. Uh, the thing about this room though, is it is an even number. So we don't have like a center point block. So we're going to have to make our controller two blocks wide eventually. So we'll probably put the controller block like right here. Yeah, and then we'll just assume later we'll have another controller block right here. Yeah, and then if we expand out, we'll do two more at a time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but yeah, for right now, this is probably, well, right on top of this torch anyway. It'll be floating one block above the ground. Uh, that's where we're going to have our controller. Okay, um, so we need to get the wires ran from the controller over to our drives so we have data we can receive and take items out of the storage. Uh, we need to work on these cables over here now originally i ran these dense me cables underground and then up yep and they go all the way up to the top uh we can change this up and conserve on these dense cables by using peer-to-peer -peer tunnels so there's a lot of crafting that we have to do uh to get everything hooked up uh we also need to make all the stuff for the auto crafting which i want to get hooked up today too uh so let's see in order to get auto crafting going uh, we need the co-processors. Yeah, these things right here. So we need some of these, which is a crafting unit plus an engineering processor. That's not too bad. Crafting unit, calculation logic, uh, I guess two calculations, some iron, glass cable, all that stuff is relatively easy. And then we're also going to need crafting storage. And there's many different tiers similar to how there are different size disks. Uh, to get us started, we could probably just use a 1K crafting storage and just like the regular discs you can upgrade these by putting this unit in your crafting grid you take it apart you get the unit back and the 1k storage so yeah we can start small and then upgrade so it's not that big of a deal i don't remember if we have any do we have any 4k 1k we do have one how about a 16 no okay so we have one 1k so we could right away make a 1k crafting storage then we're also going to need the um the assemblers, I think is what it's called. Molecular assembler. Yep. Uh, quartz glass formation and annihilation core. Yeah, this is all, you know, pretty much the same stuff, the same items that go in all these different recipes. Okay, so let me go ahead and just make up a quick auto crafting thing. I'll make up some P2P tunnels so we can get things connected and hooked up properly. And we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. Well, I did some crafting and I made some crafting co-processors and I made some 4K crafting storage. Like I said, we can take these apart and upgrade them later. So we don't really need huge ones to get us going with our auto crafting. Uh, yeah, we'll use the smaller ones to auto craft all of our bigger components and we'll replace everything eventually. So the way this is set up is we have, um, yeah, an interface next to a molecular assembler, but some of these can talk to multiple molecular assemblers. So when you're doing the auto crafting, this interface uh, puts the raw materials into one of these guys. It does the crafting, spits the item back into the interface. So it's pretty awesome. Uh, in a setup like this, yeah, you're taking advantage of each interface talking to multiple different 
assembler, so it's, yeah, it's good. I like it. Uh, there probably are better setups out there. I haven't seen better setups personally, and I really like this design, especially since it's too wide. It matches up with our two wide server binks that we have over there. So yeah, this is going to be pretty good. I think we'll have like maybe, well, we'll probably do three along here to match up with our servers, like I said. And we might do two more rows. I don't really know how much auto crafting space we're going to need, but we got plenty of room for expansion. So yeah. The next step of this process though, is we need to move our ME controller. Yep, we need to move a lot of the stuff over here. Uh, so I think, like I said, we're gonna move the ME controller here. So let us do some stuff. I'm probably gonna want it sitting right on top of this block. So let us turn off our ME system and grab our power. Yeah, we're gonna get some things going here. So the ME controller is gonna sit right like so. Uh, for now, how do we have that set up? Yeah, the, we have this touching right like that. Okay, so for now, we're gonna power this from the side. Now, I know people are telling me that I should make the energy acceptor <laughs> instead of wasting a side with the power. In this mod pack on expert mode, the energy acceptor is basically the same recipe as the ME controller. So if you're gonna, you know, take the resources to make an energy acceptor, you might as well just build another controller and get all those extra faces. You know what I'm saying? So anyway, yeah, uh, it's not really worth it in this mod pack to make the energy acceptor specifically for your ME network. Um, okay, so anyway, we are going to do some stuff here. So we're going to stick an ME dense cable. I've dyed this color black. Yeah, we're going to stick an ME cable on the back of this. So we're going to take all 32 channels off the side. We're going to use a P2P tunnel. So we'll connect that there. You can put the P2P tunnel directly on the controller. You don't need to use this cable. I like having this cable here so I can see, you know, at a glance, how many channels per side are being used. So anyway, that's just personal preference. You don't have to do that. And then we will take this ME cable like so. Again, I've dyed it black and we will just run this straight up here. This is going to connect to our main ME network. Yeah, so the next step is we need to start disconnecting some things. Uh, let us disconnect that and that. I'm going to leave everything else on that Fluex cable. Our black cable can connect to the Fluex, so that's pretty good. Yep. Not only that, if we were to change out all those cables up there to the black, like all of our displays up top would be black. All the Fluex color, all the purple in them would turn to like that grayish black color. I kind of like them as that Fluex color. So yeah, I think we're just going to leave it like so. Okay, so now I can go ahead and remove all of these additional cables <laughs> that are no longer required. Yeah, the uh, the P2P tunnels are really good. They're a little expensive at the start in this pack. That's why I just decided to uh, make the big old dense cable and all of this. But this is going to make things a lot more clean. So we have 32 channels going to be running up here. Oh, you know what? I did make a mistake, didn't I? I have made an error. Okay, so what we need to do is put another dense cable like right there. So this Fluex is going to connect to this dense cable and then we can put like our P another P2P tunnel up here. All right. And then we can run this black cable like that. Okay. So the black cable is what is holding our P2P network connections. Yeah, and we're gonna have a P2P tunnel up here and then our 32 channels exist right there. The only other part of this that we need to do is we need to give this cable power. See how there aren't lights on there right now? Yep, we need to give it power. So a way we can do that and what we'll probably do temporarily, I can't remember, can we do a quartz fiber onto this? We can. Okay, so we can do quartz fiber right there, and then I'm going to use red cables just to kind of show that it's different. Uh, let's see. I guess we can just do... Can I not connect there? I guess it won't let me connect it there. Oh, you know what? These cables don't connect to other colors, do they? I guess we have to use a quartz fiber. Okay, that's fine. Just like that. Okay, so the red cable... And these quartz fiber, this is just sending power. The quartz only allows power through, does not allow data. So what we're doing is taking the power that's on this ME dense cable right here. Yeah, we're just taking the power, sending it over into this gray wire. So this gray wire now has power and these P2P tunnels will work. Cool. 
So memory card, we can shift right click on this one, save settings, and then we can come up here and just right click on this one, loaded settings, and I do believe everything should be working now. Not seeing anything happen here. <laughs> I should see some lights. Well, the uh, the tooltip does say five out of 32 channels. So yeah, I think we're good. I think we are just fine. Okay, so that's how that's gonna work. Uh, not the prettiest thing. I might make this cable down below or something so we can hide it a little bit easier. I don't know, we'll figure that out. But yeah, that's the basic. So you have the uh, P2P tunnel with just a regular glass fiber up there with another P2P tunnel. And then you can use these dense cables to get all 32 channels out of it. Again, we don't need the dense cable right here. I just like being able to see how many channels are being used down here. I guess there is a small little mark. It's really hard to see right there of uh, the channel being used. Cool. So now that that's done, we need to do the same thing to connect to our storage over here. So we can uh, take another one of these dense cables like so. Yeah. Dense cable right there. P2P tunnel like that. Cool. And then we need to get this all the way over here. So let's go ahead and disconnect this junk. I'll have to go through and clean up all these cables. I do want uh, these dense cables. They are kind of expensive. Um, yeah, let's see. How do we want to do this? We'll have 32 channels so we can connect to a few of these drives. We can also try doing the infinite drive storage kind of a thing. I think for right now, we will just hook this up normal. And then we'll look at doing the infinite drive storage, the sub network storage later. All right, so where are we going? Probably to right there. Okay, so this cable is all ran like so. And then we need the P2P and a dense cable. Is this the right one? Yeah, it's a black one. All right, so there we go. There's our dense cable. Um, yeah, so off there we can run. I guess we'll just use Fluex to connect to these machines. Like so. Yeah, we want to use different colors so we know which one is just doing the P2P tunnel connections and which ones are doing our regular connections. So maybe we'll use Fluex for all of our regular stuff. We'll use black for all of our P2P tunnels. And then I guess, you know, the dense cable doesn't really matter what color that is. I just tied these black to go with the other stuff. Okay, so now that that's done, we have to do the memory card thing once again. So let's come back over here and we will shift right click on this one and right click on that one. And then we also have to give it power. All right, so quartz and the glass fiber. I don't know how we're gonna do this. I guess if we were to run this down below, I could use it off both of them. <laughs> so anyway, that's something I'll probably end up changing. All right, so we can do red, red, and then a quartz. There we go. So now this has power. The uh, the channels are connected. We can see the lights are now on. Cool. So with all of this stuff done, <laughs> we should be able to go upstairs and again see all. Whoops. And again see all of our stuff in the ME system. Yes, it is all there. Cool. All right, so that just saved us a whole lot of those ME dense cables. Now I still need to go through and remove this entire line and rerun the wire up there and put some more P2P tunnels. Let me do some more stuff off camera and we'll be right back guys. All right guys, well I spent some time here trying to run the wires, get everything figured out, do all the things that we need to do. And this is what we've ended up with. It looks a lot cleaner in my opinion than what it was before. Yeah, and once we expand down and put another controller here like this particular cable will go away and it'll be replaced with the controller block. So it'll look just like this anyway. Um, the way I have this set up right now is we have the black cable in the center and then I've made some gray cables. Yeah, that way they don't connect. Alternatively, like I've done in the past, you can use cable anchors to separate the same color cables. But yeah, it's, you know, you can either do different color cables or you can use like cable anchors to separate them so they don't connect. I went with different colors this time. This is the first time I've done it this way. So yep, that's what I wanted to try out this time. Uh, but yeah, so we have this cable going off into the back here and then off of this I have a power cable that's connected to this color cable, this gray one. Yeah, this is a gray wire here and we are 
uh, running into a gray wire back there. I guess I could have just ran this thing straight out the back, but whatever. <laughs> uh, the way I'm trying to do this though, is we use like a black keyboard here off the controller and that goes into a black keyboard here that's doing the P2P channels, just trying to keep everything separated or whatever. Um, but anyway, I tried putting like a cable cover, or I guess a cable facade onto here to close in this hole and you can't really do that. You put a cable facade there and it's like, nope, we are going to place it right like that. Um, yeah, I tried placing this in many different ways and different positions and it just won't go the way I want it to go. So maybe I could remove this particular cable here and then place it, I don't know. But anyway, uh, I just went ahead and I made these laboratory block hollow covers with the hole in it since you can use either or with applied energistics. Yeah, that's the method I'm going with. I might play around with this a little bit later and try and clean this up. Uh, this definitely isn't 100% finalized. We're going to be adding on to it and changing it over time. So for now, yeah, going from, um, uh, you know, connected textures to a non-connected texture. You can kind of see the little border around there, but whatever. It's all fine. So we have all of our storage hooked up. Let's actually go downstairs. I put another elevator block down here. Um, so yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> It's kind of difficult to understand what's going on here, I guess, but this black cable comes off that center one right there into this P2P tunnel. Yeah, this carries all of that stuff from that bottom side of the controller over here and then outputs it to this P2P tunnel. And then underneath here, we have this dense cable where you can see we're using 12 channels on these 12 ME drives, right? And that goes into this P2P tunnel. And then this wire continues over here to another P2P and then we're doing another 12 channels and then over here, which we will be using another 12 eventually, but we are not currently using those. So all of those channels added up, including these P2P tunnels, I think, well, I can't really read that, can I? Uh, I put a smart cable here that shows you how many different channels are being used on this black cable that's uh, moving the P2P tunnels around. So we can see there's five out of eight different connections. We can have three more P2P tunnels on that particular black cable. But yeah, if we come up here, we can see there's a total of 27 different channels being used for our storage drives right now. Yeah, that's kind of a lot. Uh, the extra channels that are being used for those is this stuff down here. Yeah, I have this ME interface where we can import items from the center chest into it on that same line. And then our two filing cabinets, or I guess these storage buses for our dimlets. All right. So yeah, that's where all the different channels are being used for that. And then I ran a gray cable all the way down here for our auto crafting. So yeah, we have P2P here. And then we have two more over here for when we eventually hook up more. Mm-hmm. So that's the way everything's hooked up right now. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of what else I should show you guys. <laughs> uh, the gray cable that runs up here. Yeah, this goes into our ME stuff up top so we can uh, see what's everything's in the system like we've always done. That cable runs all the way over here and then every so often I have also put uh, these P2P tunnels so we can run ME cables up to our machines and stuff like that. If we want to do automation up there, which we probably will eventually. All right. So I think we are all good. The next thing I'd like to work on at this point is getting our auto crafting, actually auto crafting stuff. So for instance, I was looking at making the ME wireless terminal. Did not call the wireless terminal. It's called this thing. Wireless access point. Uh, I guess there's another wireless terminal it might not be called ME, but anyway, we need to make all of these different things. And I think it's about time we start hooking up our auto crafting to do this for us. So uh, I put a pattern terminal over here previously and we haven't really done anything with this thing. So we need a blank pattern. By the way, I know I've done this before. Uh, in any, uh, if you click something and drag it, it shows you all of these items, but you can't place it anywhere. That's just like a bug with any eye, uh, unless you're in cheat mode, I guess, which, you know, I'm not in cheat mode. Uh, but anyway, yeah, that happens sometimes when I try and click too fast. Uh, so we need to make a blink pattern. We can craft one right like that. Then we can use this pattern to make more blink patterns. There we go. We have an encoded pattern. 
that can make blink patterns. So I can take this now downstairs. Actually, I don't have to take it downstairs. Don't we have an interface terminal here? Yeah, we can just put this pattern right here into our interface terminal, which shows us the inventory of all the interfaces on the network, which should be, well, this one right here I need to get rid of. That is, uh, go down one more. That is this interface right here. We don't care about this. This doesn't need to show up on the network so I can click this button. But yeah, now all the interfaces that show up there should be our crafting ones so that nothing won't show there anymore. Cool. All right, so this pattern is now in one of those interfaces that can do the auto crafting. I don't know which one doesn't really matter. Uh, but now what that will allow us to do is craft blank patterns automatically. Let's craft up 40. We don't have enough quartz glass. So let us craft up 20. <laughs> we still don't have enough quartz glass. Okay, so quartz glass is another one that we are going to tell it to auto craft. Uh, all right, so quartz glass. Let's make a pattern for that. Oh, you know what? I don't have a blank pattern to do that. Dang it. All right, let's craft up a blank pattern real quick. Let's craft up a couple of those just in case. All right, so quartz glass will do this. Make a pattern. All right, so that can go right there. So now we should be able to tell the system. Blank pattern. Make 30. All right, now it says we got everything there. So now we can auto craft 30 of those things. The auto crafting is going kind of slow. I don't have any upgrades in our auto crafting machines. We will make patterns to do that. Uh, so we can put all the blank patterns here and we can continue doing our auto crafting stuff. Guess I should clean up my inventory. It's getting a little crazy. All right. So the next thing, let us, yeah, you know what? We should make those upgrades. That would probably be the next thing we should make, right? Um, so over here in our pattern terminal, let's look up the different cards that we can create. So we need one for the basic card. So we'll do a pattern for this. And then we're going to need one for the acceleration card. Yep. Oh, we don't have one of the blink cards. So let's craft them. We'll stick one in the system. Then we will do the acceleration card. All right. So there we go. There's acceleration cards that we can now auto craft. Cool. We have five in the system. Let's craft up a total of 20 more. No, we don't have enough advanced cards. Okay, so that's another thing that we're going to have to uh, tell it how to craft advanced card. Oh, okay. That isn't too bad. Advanced card. Okay, so now we should be able to tell it to make ourselves some acceleration cards. Cool. And auto crafting go. Awesome. Yeah, so now I can stick those in the molecular assemblers downstairs. And the crafting will always go that much faster. Awesome. All right, so let me go ahead and get a few more things out of crafted here. I'm going to try and upgrade all of our uh, storage and all of this stuff. And we'll be back, guys. All right, guys, so all of our crafting things downstairs have been upgraded with all the acceleration cards. And I made a few patterns here. I've been <laughs> making a whole bunch of the fluid storage patterns, all of the different regular data storage patterns. There's even patterns. Well, I mean, sorry, <laughs> there's even storage components for Thomcraft stuff. We'll look at this in the future uh, a little bit. I haven't unlocked the research yet, so I couldn't make patterns. They don't show up for things that I can do. But yeah, there's Digicentra storage here. And once I unlock this, I think I have to purchase each of the different crafting components. I don't remember how that all works, but that's something we will definitely be doing. But yeah, uh, having fluid storage in the ME system, that's going to be pretty awesome. Okay, so I wanted to make the wireless stuff. So we can make a wireless terminal. Let's go ahead and craft up one of these. Cool. And then we will craft up the wireless access point. Let's craft that. And then finally, wireless boosters. I can't remember how many we need. Is it a stack or is it 16? I think it might be a stack. Or maybe... No, I can't remember. <laughs> I just don't. Anyway, let's go ahead and craft up a full stack of those. 
yeah, crafting goes so much faster now. Cool. So the wireless access point, wireless booster, uh, wireless terminal, we're also going to need the security terminal. I forgot about this. So we need a 16K storage and then an ME chest. Oh, man. Energy acceptor. Okay. Yeah. This is something I wasn't aware of. Okay. So in order to make the security terminal, which is required to have a wireless system, we need an energy acceptor. And the energy acceptor is the other way to power your ME system, which costs about the same as the ME controller. So yeah, it's a quantum core, nether stars, enriched scenarium, iridium reinforced plates. Whew. Yeah, and the Gal Gadorian metal. This stuff right here, this is something I want to look at getting kind of automated at some point. I don't know if we can fully automate it or not. We might be able to. Uh, but things that this thing requires, like his magma cream and these gas tiers, this is a thing where we set up that spawner previously, and then I had to sit there and camp it for like an hour to get all the gas tiers we needed. Um, yeah, this is definitely something I want to get automated at some point in the future. Oh man, I was hoping we could do the wireless today, but I forgot about that. Yep, it got me. It got me. Okay, so we'll put all this stuff away and we will look at that another time. Well, unfortunately, since we can't do the wireless, let's go ahead and upgrade our storage capacity. That's, I think, going to be the next thing I want to do here. So 64K drives, I have 20. We are going to make... 20 more. I'll just take all the ones I have with me. Not this stuff. You go back in the system. All right, so that is auto crafting 20 more of the 64K drives. Down here on this bottom row, I have filled these up with 64Ks. So yeah, we have the 4Ks here and the 16Ks here. So we need to start doing some rearranging with all of our disks. Cool. So in order to do things like that, we need... <laughs> An MEIO port, yes. So an MEIO port where you can take a disk, transfer all the data off of it, stick it into our network, and yeah, empty all the content. So that's the next thing we need to do. So let's take some of these 4K drives and we will replace them with these 64s, like so. All right, so all the stuff that was there is now in my inventory and we'll do the same thing over here as well. We'll just go ahead and pull all of these disks out of there. Doesn't really matter the order. And there we go. Okay, so now that middle row is all 64K disks. So now we can stick these guys in this MEIO port. It's gonna pull all the data off these things. The empty ones go over here. And yeah, it just continues on to the next one. Cool. So we can pull all the data off of those disks and it's gonna move it. It might be moving up to these top ones. It might be moving it down here. It's really hard to tell where it's going. I guess it's going over onto this drive for some reason. Doesn't really matter though. But yeah, that's where all of our old data is going. Cool. So then I can take these guys apart. Oh, you know what? I guess I should figure out <laughs> uh, where the full ones are and where the empty ones are. These all empty down here. I guess all the empty ones are right here. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, these empty ones, we can go ahead and take apart just by putting in our crafting grid. We get the storage housing back and we get the components so we can put that into our system. The auto crafter will go ahead and use these to upgrade, or I guess to craft new 64K disks later on. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. Cool, so I'm gonna go ahead and move all of our data <laughs> off the smaller drives, put it onto larger drives. Uh, we need to fill up all these different drive banks full of disks eventually. The biggest problem that I'm running into right now making the 64K drives is that the system says that it requires pure Certus Quartz. I'm actually not sure if that's just a problem with the way I created these components or if it is a, in fact the case that it needs. You know what? I think we can use regular Certus Quartz here. Yeah, I might have to just change this, uh, the pattern for the 1Ks. I think I have that set up so it says pure Certus Quartz only so the system only knows how to make that with pure. Anyway, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, so I don't have to keep making the pure service quartz. I'll go ahead and fill up these drives. I'm probably going to make all of the different drives for all of these, but I don't know if I'm going to fill up all 64K all the way down. That's a lot of crafting. I don't know if we have all the materials. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Getting the AE stuff going, guys. This is so good. I'm super happy about this as well. Uh, two episodes, two things to be super happy about. Oh, my goodness. Things are happening in this series, that's for sure. All right, guys. 
that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on this episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.